What is up you guys? So in this one, we'll be talking about the continuous time complex exponential. Why is it important? How can we characterize different continuous time complex exponentials or we can refer to them as harmonics and we'll see what it means to have multiple harmonics in terms of a periodic signal. And essentially it's going to turn out to be a major component to write down the Fourier series expansion, which we will not explain thoroughly in this lecture, but we will keep it for future lectures. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so now let's define a continuous time exponential. So say I've got a signal that is SFT, which is given as follows. So it's the exponential of j k omega zero t or using the expression of omega zero that is two pi f zero we get e j two pi k f zero t right now note that here k is a very important parameter and it's so important <laughs> that the signal SFT is subscripted by K. Okay, and we'll, we'll, we'll reveal why. So SKFT, since the frequency is KF0, and why is that? Well, we can use Euler's formula over here to express this complex exponential in algebraic form as cosine the exponent. So two pi, kf 0 t plus j sine the same amount so again 2 pi kf 0 of times t right and from the previous lectures on continuous time cosine we saw that the frequency is this term over here right so the frequency of both the real and imaginary part of the signal is the same. So we say that the frequency of the complex exponential is also k of zero. So the fundamental period of SKT, which is defined as t, is one over frequency, right? So it is one over k of zero, right? Or we can write this more differently as t zero over k where t0 is 1 over f0. Now, we emphasize here on k to denote the, the fundamental period tk, let's call it tk, is t0 over k. So the first harmonic, this we refer to as harmonic, and we'll see why. This is why we emphasize on k. It's because the fundamental period is nothing other than a fraction of k, right? of the main period t0, okay? So S1 of t has fundamental period t0 over one, that is t0. S2 of t has fundamental period t0 over two. S k of t, t0 over k, and so forth. So they're all related, all these S k of t signals are actually a fraction of t0, a ratio t0 over k, right? So now another thing to bear in mind over here is that all the SKFT signals, all of them, let it be S1, S2, down to let's say Sn, all of them have a common frequency or period. And what is it? Well, since S1 has fundamental period T0 over 1. S2 has fundamental period T0 over 2. And Sn has fundamental period T0 over n. And bearing in mind that fundamental period is the smallest period where the signal repeats itself. Having said that, there exist other periods that are clearly larger than the fundamental period. So for S2 of t, t0 over 2 is a period, 
and so is any multiple of t0 over 2, right? So that said, t0 is also a period. It's not the fundamental period, but it's a period. For the signal S n of t, t0 over n is a period, and so is t0. So all these signals have a common period. And what is it? It's t0. Now, what's interesting here is that because of this common period between all those k harmonics, it means that if I sum them up in some way, let's say we form a linear combination of all those signals, let's say I sum them up in one signal, call it x of t, where I just take the sum from k equal, I can go over all integers, doesn't matter. You could say s k of t by summing them up, but let's be more flexible here. Instead of taking just a mere sum of all the harmonics, we're going to weigh them. So we're going to form a linear combination of all those harmonics. So since each, again, since each and every one of those s k of t signal have a common period t0, then x of t is also a signal of period t0 because each and every one of those skft has a common period t0 it will turn out to be that x of t has not only a period t0 but a fundamental period t0 okay and actually this representation over here has a name we didn't introduce it out of nowhere and we'll be referring to this a lot in future lectures. Actually, we're going to dedicate lectures just for this. This is actually referred to as the Fourier series expansion of X of T. Now, this is super important while studying the components of any signal X of T, let it be periodic or not. Well, in this case, x of t is periodic of period t0, right? And that's why it's because of the, you know, we wrote it as a sum of complex exponentials, right? And each of them has a period t0, so x of t is of period t0, of course. But this could, keep in mind that this could also be extended for non-periodic signals. And that's by letting t to go to infinity, okay? So that's all I have to say about continuous time, complex exponentials, it is very important to keep in mind that a complex exponential looks like this. And any integer multiple of this complex exponential will lead a higher frequency, of course, a multiple of k, and thus a period of 1 over kf0, that is t0 over k. Now, why t0? It turns out to be that t0 is the common period of all the harmonics. And this is important because we can weigh and sum all the harmonics to form a signal that is, again, of period t0. Now, this summation is referred to as the Fourier series expansion, where your main concern over here is to find out the CKs that give you this approximation or expansion. So in the next one, we'll be talking about discrete time complex exponentials. And I'll see you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you found this lecture beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can leave your question down in the comment section below. I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Also consider donating to my Patreon account any amount you wish. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in future lectures.